He's on it. Jump, 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 go. You got yeah. him, man. You got him. Yes! yes. Woo! Oh Keep going. Keep lifting. There you go. Yeah. I got him. I got him. I got him. No yeah. Way. Nice work, Amy. First one of the day. <laughs> and first one on a pan fishing. Oh my goodness. Today, I'm heading out of Hamilton Harbor with Coach Paul sight fishing for monster summer carp. My name is Avery Rose. I got him! Oh, yeah! 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 Oh, God! It's, huge! it's over! I'm a small town girl from Canada, and sport fishing has been my passion since as long as I can remember. Back to back domination! Your Bassmaster Classic champion! Learn with me as I team up with pro anglers from my region in an effort to inspire the next generation. Production assistance for Hooked is provided by Smokercraft, the first family of boats. Yamaha, revs your heart. Shimano. And by Humminbird and Minn Kota. Quite often when people bring up common carp as a sport fish, you'll hear them say that the best place for a carp is in your garden bed. Yes, they actually think this awesome creature is only good to be used as fertilizer. I, on the other hand, have a lifelong appreciation for both their beauty and the fact that they're some of the hardest fighting fish in the Great Lakes system. These fish are readily available in most urban areas and are an incredible species to target for new and experienced anglers alike. In this episode, I learn an uncommon way to catch these remarkable fish in Hamilton Harbor. So I grew up fishing this body of water, you know, right here, we're in Hamilton Harbor. My grandparents lived down the street from here and I was born in the city and I've been coming here my entire life. And the fishing for carp is something that we just kind of stumbled on. There were so many of them. And it's not always about bass fishing or pike fishing or walleye fishing. You know, I think taking advantage of any opportunity that you have present. When I was younger, I wanted to fish so badly that carp was the only thing that I had available because I didn't have a boat, I didn't have a car. I used to take the bus down here from my house, two buses actually, and then walk to get to the spot, just an opportunity to catch carp, and I've fallen in love with this fish a long, long time ago. So to be able to pass that on to you and hopefully teach some of the viewers out there that it isn't a species that you should overlook. So if you have carp close to your house, close to a big city, which you probably do, every great lake I've ever been to, most ponds, most rivers, have these carp. So if you have an opportunity to see them and on a sunny day take advantage of that opportunity and try this sight fishing. It is super exciting, it's very rewarding and it's a lot more challenging than you think but it is not that challenging. Some carp eat, some carp don't. That's just the way it goes but it's extremely rewarding. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode. Today I have a very special guest, the man, the myth, the legend, my coach and fishing mentor, Coach Paul is here today and we are back for season two. Last year, when we were filming season one, he took me out to try and catch the five biggest bass tournament style, and we completely crushed our goal of weight we wanted to catch. And so today, we are here in Hamilton Harbor, and Coach Paul is going to try and help me catch a species that I absolutely love, and I have have been fishing since I was a little girl. We are going to try and catch me a carp, my personal best carp. So the plan, Avery, is to do exactly that. This, this area in all of the Great Lakes and, and so many bodies of water, I don't think people take advantage of fishing for carp. The plan is to sight fish, Avery. So there's pods of carp, um, they're deep, they're shallow, but what we're gonna look for is we're gonna hope that we have sun. We're gonna cruise some of the rocky shorelines. We're gonna cruise some of the, the industrial shorelines. And we're gonna look for suspended carp, but we're actually going to hopefully find carp, pick the one we want, cast a jig to it. It's called the drag and drop. 
So I'm gonna teach you the drag and drop for carp, and it's something that if we do have an opportunity, you have a, a chance, there's potential at catching very large fish, mm -hmm. and they're super strong. So I'm, I'm excited to share this with you. Um, the conditions are absolutely, so at the calm. moment, perfect. I'm not sure many people realize that these fish will actually eat lures, eat jigs, eat flies, um, and we use bass and walleye crappie equipment for it. So it's a lot of fun, so you have a chance to cast you know, your normal spinning equipment that you already have. So that's the plan, Avery. I don't know where we're gonna go, but the plan is, is to use the sun fish areas where we can see and try not to make a lot of noise, and then we'll get into the whole drag and drop as the day goes on, so. Okay, let's get going. Right now, Paul is scouting for fish. He's already got his rods rigged up, and I am rigging up this little nymph jig and I'm putting it on a medium light rod and it is a very light line we're using today. There we go. Let's set up the perfect cast. So that fish is facing us. Let's just say this is his face. Yeah. And he was facing us. So a good cast is if you can get it past him. Oh, and then reel up. Right, and get a nice line, Avery. Uh -huh. Right, and you see your jig and then try to drop it in front of him. Okay. And then you gotta watch for him to react or her or, or the fish. There's a big one feeding right there, Avery. There. Can you see? Hold on. Let me see. He's turning. He's turning. See how, I'm tur see how he turned on it? He's chasing. Oh, yeah, I see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, oh. You got him. No, no, no. The bite isn't hard. That's the problem. It's not like a, like they don't hold it like a bass does. Most of the carp Avery, it's just you see their mouth go like this. Like you see their, you just see their mouth flare or you see your jig go and you got to hit them right away. Okay. Because they will spit it out right away too. If you see the mouth flare and you can't see your bait, just pull up because he's, he's got it. There's one there. This is a cool spot. So he, he, oh, I see him. Yeah, he's that's up his there. back, right? So let's just go in front of him. Oh. Got him. Yes. Yes. Woohoo. Oh, gone. Dang it. Okay. Did so, he break off? No, he just pulled out. Just pulled out. Just pulled out. Drag was too tight. Oh. My fault. My fault. There's fish here, that's a good thing. Okay, now drop, reel it to his face, stop right there, stop. Too far. Oh, see how he turned? Wait, twitch it. Oh, he went right for it. Ah! So wait, there's more, there's more. There's Just, one right there. You wanna come up here and try? Sure. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, don't fall. Oh. Go, 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 before we get too far. So see this little guy up here? Yep. Try to get it to fall. Right in front of him. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, oh! I missed him. Missed him. So I tied a fluorocarbon later on because I didn't want the carp to see my line when I was casting. But Coach Paul told me that I can probably get more accuracy and cast farther with just tying it straight braid because the knot from tying the uh, leader to the braid um, was getting caught up in the guides, so I'm going to tie my jig to straight braid. Do we want to go through the creepy birds? They destroyed that island. It's just all rocks now. I want to get pooped on. Good chance we're getting pooped on. Really don't feel like getting pooped on. Let's move. Oh, there's tons of them. We found them. We found them, eh? There's so there's many here. So I'm switching up the color to this little black and chartreuse color and seeing if that makes a difference because Coach Paul's bait he's using is black too. Ready to go. Try to get it in front of that guy. See what he does. Good. Yeah, try that a few times. Oh, that's good. Drop it. He's on it. Jump, 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 go. You got yeah. him, man. You got him. Yes! yes. That was perfect, buddy. Oh, In, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let him run. Tip one. high, tip high. Make sure your it's drag's loose. Tip high. Tip high. Oh Lower God. your reel. There you go. Oh, that was sick. Woo! <laughs> that was perfect. See how he came over and scarfed it? Oh, my God. Yeah, buddy. You he just changed, running. too. Literally just running. changed your bug. I know. Now she's a color expert up for carp. <laughs> Oh, this is a big oh, fish. Yeah, so the, the problem is the hooks we have are good, but if you pull too hard with the straight braid, you can straighten it. So it's a combination, like pull, but not overly hard. It feels so heavy. Keep going, keep lifting. There you go. Yeah. I got him, I got him, I got no him, way. yeah. <laughs> nice work, Avery. First one of the day, <laughs> and first one on a pan fishing. Oh my goodness.
Okay. Look, look, look. You can see it on, I'm sure you can get it on camera. It's totally scarf that jig. I'm gonna spot lock us. Let's bring this guy right up. And we'll get your weight on this. Between 20 and 21. <laughs> with the net. <laughs> Yay! This is crazy. My first ever carp that I caught while sight fishing. This is awesome. Look at the size of this fish. And there are even bigger ones. Bye-bye, Carby. Awesome, awesome. We're using braided line, both Avery and myself. I have a five pound braided line and she has an eight pound. And the reason I like the five and eight pound, they're very thin, they're very soft, and they help you cast these super light jigs. If you use like a normal fluorocarbon or a, a stiff monofilament, and you have a jig that's this light, it's very difficult to cast. So that was just one of the advantages of using straight braid and no fluorocarbon leader was the ability that it gives us to cast these light jigs. Oh, he's coming for it. Go, 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 go. Oh, he oh, was beside it. Oh, he was beside it. No. Uh-oh. What? No fish. <laughs> Got one. Got him to eat too. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, that's a big one. It's totally side fish that out. He was cruising, came one. up and just grabbed it. Amazing. Hopefully he stays pinned. He's buried in that weed bed right there. They're strong. Oh, like, yeah. You can't just pull these things in. No, they're really strong. Oh boy. Oh, no. oh boy. He's still peeling Why? Oh, that's a big fish. Yes! Nice, nice Avery. Oh, oh that's my a good one. Oh gosh, look at the size of that. Fish. I don't know, they get a lot bigger, but that's a nice one. That is a, that is Coach a... Paul has caught too many in his lifetime. It's gonna be heavy. Ready? One, two, three, go! Oh, oh yeah! Boy, oh, that's a good one. That's it right there. So we've cast, a, I don't know, 20, 25 fish. We've got six now to bite. We've landed two casting small jigs to cruising carp, and the pattern definitely today seems to be rocks close to deep water. What do you think, Avery? That is uh, awesome! That's a good one. What do you think that weighs? Do you want to weigh it? What do you think? The net weighed two pounds. Yep. Oh my gosh. 22. 24 pounds. So he's a 22, roughly give or take 22 pound carp. <laughs> That's yeah. a giant yeah. carp. You can see the mouth. When that mouth flares like that, you're gonna watch your jig. A lot of times you don't get a hard take like you will with a pike or a bass or other species. So you literally have to be able to watch that jig, disappear, time it right, and then set up on it. So sunlight's important. Polarized glasses are important. Put that in the, in the water there, Ave, so he doesn't get hurt. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Good stuff, oh, well, babe. Good stuff. That Thanks was for help. awesome. That was good. So we got an 18 and a 22 pounder. It took a lot of casts, but it's worth it. That is yep. fun. That is so much fun. It is so fun. I love sight fishing carp. We are interrupting today's urban carp fishing smash fest with an important public service announcement. Although we are having a blast today catching these beautiful common carp, their cousins, known as the grass carp, are an invasive species which threaten this very ecosystem. How do you identify these invasive creatures? Well, they have a more flat, scaleless head with their eyes right in the middle of it. Unlike the common carp that we are targeting today, grass carp have a jawed mouth, no barbels, and a very short dorsal fin. They have large scales with dark edges covering their bodies and range in color from blackish to olive brown with brassy or silvery white on the sides and belly. Don't let their beauty fool you though because grass carp pose a huge threat to the Great Lakes. These fish can grow up to 45 kilograms and they eat about 40% of their body weight in aquatic plants daily. That's a whole lot of plants. They only digest about half of what they eat and what's left of their waste pollutes the water, creating algae blooms and decreasing the water clarity. If you're out fishing and you think you've spotted a grass carp, make a note of your location by marking a waypoint on your graph or dropping a pin on your phone. Once you've done that, call the Invasive Species Hotline at 1-800-563-7711 or report the sighting through the EDD Maps Ontario app or online at eddmaps.org slash Ontario. If you catch a fish and you think it might be a grass carp, confirm its identity. If you need help identifying it, you can check out asiancarp.ca. 
Most importantly, do not release it. Kill it and gut it, but leave the head and the eyes undamaged and store it on top of ice in a cooler. Fisheries and Oceans Canada will come to you and be able to research where the fish came from and if it's sterile or fertile. The last thing we want is these fish establishing a population in our waters. Be on the lookout and help stop the spread of invasive species in our incredible fishery. Now, let's get back to fishing. Coach Paul, you fish for everything. I do. Why would you just fish for one thing? Hold on, Abe. Let's spot lock right here, because there is a bunch of them in here feeding. See them? Yep, I do. Oh, sorry. Got them. Got them. Yes! Getting the nets, getting the nets. Fish That's the number deal. two. You know, what, you know what we'll do? For Coach Paul. You know what we'll do, Abe? We'll, um, we'll spot lock? Yeah, we'll spot lock because the wind is making it. Oh my awesome. goodness, that thing is peeling so much line. Oh Look at that. Oh my goodness, Gone. that thing is Gone. peeling so much line. Gone. Are you going to have to chase this fish? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually chasing him right now. We're going to get some line back on the reel. <laughs> oh my goodness. Man, that fish took off so far and he almost fooled Coach Paul. Oh, I see him out of the water. I, I saw him flash. Oh yeah, there he is. Oh yeah, it's a nice one. He's going under the boat. Here he comes. I see him. Yeah, there you go. Oh, <gasps> if you leave the net in one spot, I'll try to bring it to you and get him going in that direction. Oh, there you go. There yeah! you go. There you go. Club. Oh. Yeah. Car number two for Coach Paul. Look at how beautiful these fish look. They're pretty cool. Oh. Check out the size of their scales. They're basically and giant goldfish. They've got incredible eyesight. They're super spooky. They get really big, and there's tons of them. Oh, tons of them. Tons so of them. There's so many. Get him back. So, Avery, this is like a big fish, no doubt about it, but they get so much bigger. We just splashed you. Let's go, catch me a big one. Oh, I missed him. You gotta be kidding me. That one actually came over and like pounced on it. There's a whole school coming at you, Abe. Look, really? look, look, oh, look, 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 look. Oh, I see them. You're behind them. You got this, you got this. That's it, reel it over to him. Lift, drag and drop, drag and drop. Oh, he wants it. Go, go. Oh, oh, you had him. Go again. Go again. You had him. Oh, you got him to eat. Go, go. Got you got him. him. Oh, oh you got him again. You're starting to see a few now. Got him. Yeah, buddy. You totally got yes. him. Yes. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. Get, He's not moving. Get your... Get your get, oh. No. Giant right there. Got one, Eve. Come you got on. Got one? Okay, coming. Yeah. Go for the double. Are you sure? Yep, yep, go. Go, go, go. I'm gonna go to the back. Oh. He's, oh, he's gone. <laughs> the weeds. Gone in the weeds. Oh, my hook broke. Broke the hook. Oh, the worst luck. So, this is a, just a little two inch tube. And I like this one today, mainly, I don't know if it's for them or for me, but I can see the white. See how it's like a two-tone laminate? It looks like a little goby, which is great. They love little gobies. There are so many. You seen them, Ave? Yes, there are so many. Oh, look at them all. I told you, look there's at them so all. many. It's like marine land, but for carp. Like, these are the biggest carp I've ever seen yeah, in my big. life. There are some really big ones mixed in here. I agree. Right, right in the mouth. Put it right in his mouth. Oh, you got, got him. him! You got him! Got you got him! him. Yes! Fish on. Fish on. That was amazing! I watched him go oh, and no. grab it. Don't okay, go. Keep your, keep your tip Don't off. Go. I'm gonna stay on top of him. Two. That was amazing. See how he just grass. came over and grabbed it? Oh, yeah. He was right beside the boat. Isn't fighting as much, but that's okay in this spot because we don't want him to bury in these weeds, right? Yeah, that would not be good. Okay, lift up a little bit slowly. Watch the boat. If you're rubbing the boat, you might have to put your rod lower. And I'm gonna try to help you, okay? Oh, my gosh. This fish is going insane. Yeah, keep that on. Keep that pressure on, okay? Okay. It's like a steady lift up. If I can get the net down, I'm going to go for it. Keep lifting, keep lifting. He's going, he's going. Got him. Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> fish that number awesome. four! Yeah, buddy. Let's go! That is awesome. I think this one might be bigger than that my last 
awesome. one. No way. Well <gasps> that got me so pumped. <gasps> I'm just you think that's bigger than your first one? It might I be. I don't know. I can't tell. It is hard to tell. Let's pick them up. Here, I'll bring it in for you. I'll give you a hand. I think it is, Avery. I think I, it is, I too. think you might have broken your last one. I really I really do. I think it's heavier. Broke two oh, yeah, personal for sure, for sure. records. I'm going to call it right day. now. I think so. No, He's really right. close. He's close to the same size or bigger. Oh, my oh yeah, goodness. it's huge. It's huge. Oh huge. It's huge. It's a giant. Look at, tail. look at the tail on that. Look at, look at the paddle on that thing. Look at his mouth. That is a big fish, Avery. Avery, congratulations. You just broke your PB without us even looking. Yeah. I'm going to say right now, pick it up. Let's see. Look at how wide his tail is. I can't even get my hand all the way around it. That is so crazy. Amazing. Grab him, buddy. Okay. Oh my it's, goodness. It's so heavy. This <laughs> is so crazy. That is awesome. Giant tail, huge fins, big scales on it. I think we should weigh it to see if it's bigger than 18 pounds. I might have broken my personal best twice in one day. The carp fishing here in Hamilton Harbor is insane. Woo! Okay, so let's see. So the net weighs two, right? Yep. So let's just see, is he bigger? I beat it by one pound! 19 pounder, give or take, give or take, but 19 <laughs> pounds on the Volga. Yes, I beat it by one pound, but hey, I beat it twice in one day. So let's what do you think? Sight fishing for carp with small jigs on spinning rods. Oh, that's the best thing ever. I'm definitely going to be doing this back at home. This has been an awesome experience. Congratulations, buddy. That was perfect. You want to let him go? Let your fish go. It looks like it's ready. Oh, yeah. He's more than ready. Oh, oh, there he goes. Hey, I didn't crack 20, but that just gives me a reason to come back to this awesome carp fishery. I caught two fish for 37 pounds. And really any day with two fish for 37 pounds is pretty incredible. Well, that about sums it up. The sun is going down and I have had an absolutely incredible time catching one of my favorite species, sight fishing, carp sight fishing, a whole different way that I had no clue you could do. Thank you so much, Coach Paul, for taking me out. My pleasure, Avery, my pleasure. I think you did amazing. Um, I hope that you can teach other people this new technique that you've learned, and I hope that this technique for the rest of your fishing career will give you new opportunities at a species that I think a lot of people think you can only set up bait and wait for fish. So that whole drag and drop is something that I think if you adjust your jig head size and you try it back home or wherever your adventures take you, you're going to have results. Now it's not super easy, yeah. but it's extremely rewarding. I'm definitely going to be trying that back at home. Once again, I had such an amazing time here in Hamilton Harbor. I did not quite crack 20 pounds, but you know what? I beat my personal record and that is what I came here to do. Yeah. Oh yeah! <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Hooked. If you ever have an opportunity to come and try out fishing for these giant Hamilton Harbor carp, you should really take that opportunity. And always remember to take a good fishing. <laughs>